And as already said, I will talk about the strong homotopy structure. My internet connection is not very stable. I think at least people told me when I entered. So uh, let me know if there are some, if it's a bit glitchy and then I will switch off the camera or we find a solution. Okay, so um, before I start, notable mentions. This is a joint work with Chiara and uh, Andreas Kraft. Um, uh, okay, so the outline of the talk, I mean, will be the following. First, I recall mass Weinstein reduction and the BRST method to obtain it. Afterwards, uh, I was not sure if everyone is familiar with L infinity algebras and curved Lie algebras, since they're kind of a, a object. Probably, if you do pure Poisson geometry, you will not come over. So I will review them, and afterwards um, I will talk about equivariant multivector fields and maurer cartan elements, which are part of curved Lie algebras or L infinity algebras, if you like. And um, I got already criticism for my title from uh, probably one of the audience. Um, strong homotopy is the old word uh, for L infinity uh, algebras or morphisms or what you like. Uh, it just sound, uh, sounds a bit more sexy, let's say, that uh, this uh, strong homotopy uh, structure. Um, and so it's about L infinity algebras before, <laughs> before I forget to say. And uh, the last part is I will construct an L infinity morphism, um, which relates, um, as I said in my, my abstract, which relates um, momentum maps with Poisson structures together, like pairs, and um, Poisson structures, uh, reduced Poisson structures, let's say. Okay, so I said the word reducing kind of a lot. Um, so this is, I was, I'm always referring to mass Weinstein reduction. Um, so um, the first part is basically just to fix some notations. Um, so we say a Hamiltonian G space is um, a vector with five entries, which consists of a Lie group action of a Lie group G on the manifold M. Um, we have an invariant symplectic structure and we have a map from the Lie algebra to the smooth functions of the manifold, which is called the, mom, uh, the momentum map. Um, you can equivalent, uh, um, equivalently see it as a map from the manifold into the dual of the Lie algebra, um, uh, which is equivariant. Equivariant means um, it, it um, interchanges, interwines the, the joint action or the co-joint action, depends which picture you're, you're referring to and the, the action on the manifold or on the smooth functions by push forwards, so. Okay, and this is just now the, let's say the connection between all of these objects. This is that the fundamental vector fields um, are Hamiltonian with respect to this moment map. So this X with the index is the, is the Hamiltonian vector field of a function, then if we, if we take an element from the Lie algebra G and apply J to it, we get a function, we get the Hamiltonian vector field, and this should coincide with the, um, the fundamental vector field of the action. And of course, we have something like a symplectic structure. So the, the Poisson structure should be, um, is basically it says that it's a Poisson map, a Poisson map between the, the KKS Poisson structure um, on the dual of the Lie algebra and the Poisson structure we have on the manifold induced by the symplectic structure. This is the funny brackets with the omega. Okay, um, just for convenience, a tiny example. You can cook up this Hamiltonian G spaces out of any Lie group action just by taking, taking the cotangent lift of it, um, taking the canonical um, symplectic structure on the manifold, uh, on the on the cotangent bundle, and what I need, what what is left is the moment map, and the moment map is basically just the insertion of the fundamental vector field. Okay, so fair. Okay, um, Marston-Weinstein reduction is basically 
the following theorem, which says that if I have a Hamiltonian G space, I assume that the zero level set of the moment map is a submanifold and the quotient of the Lie group acting on Z is, a, is also a manifold, then there exists a symplectic structure on the quotient, which is not really the group quotient, it's the zero level set mod the, the Lie group, uh, such that the following relation um, is fulfilled. So if I pull back uh, the, the symplectic structure on M red, um, I get a two form on C, and if I pull back the, the original symplectic structure from the manifold to C, I get also two form and they should coincide. Okay, so um, there is just, just a tiny remark. If we replace symplectic by Poisson, we can even find something similar. We just have to take care uh, of pullbacks because of course pullbacks of, of bivectors is not really possible. Besides, if you're doing Dirac geometry, then it's possible. And um, so um, basically it says that you can replace everything, everything with Poisson structures. So um, the next, I basically, people know me, I, I have at least something to do with quantization. Um, so I'm not interested in, or not only interested in Poisson, geometry, but also in formal Poisson structures. So formal Poisson structure is, as it is written here, um, a Poisson structure, a, a, a series of Poisson structures, a series of bivector fields, sorry, which um, where the Southern brackets with themselves vanishes. So it's basically a Taylor, uh, it's, a, it's a path of Poisson structure and the Taylor expansion at zero. It, you can see it like that, okay? And to do the same with the moment map, I take a moment map which takes values in the in the smooth functions and um, and formal power series in it. Um, I, as I said, I have something to do with quantization, so my formal parameter is called h bar, which I will probably explain in the very end why I called it h bar. And um, what I want to say is that if you have a Hamiltonian G space, you just replace the data Poisson with moment map, with formal Poisson and formal moment map. And what you get is a formal Poisson, a uh, formal Hamiltonian G space, okay? Um, you can show just by counting degrees of the formal parameter that the zero element is a Poisson structure. So the zero element of the, of the, um, of the formal Poisson structure is a Poisson structure. And the zero element of the, um, of the formal moment map is actually a moment map. This is this remark. Sorry, I forgot in this slide, I forgot to, uh, to, to pause in the right spaces. So um, um, the point is mass and Weinstein reduction um, doesn't really apply for formal Poisson because we don't know what is the pullback of a formal Dirac because we don't know what is a formal Dirac structure. So, so basically this is the end of the story with the mass, mass and Weinstein reduction. But um, we, we can um, uh, probably, um, I will say this later. So, okay, um, just takeaway message is you replace everything in, in, this, uh, in this vector with the five entries, uh, which is not the group and the manifold with um, a formal expansion. So moment map and Poisson structure are becoming formal expansions. So note, this is in the middle of the slide, there's a, the group action is not changed. So the, foot, uh, the, the, um, the Hamiltonian vector field of the formal po uh, moment map uh, inserted, uh, so the, sorry, the fundamental vec vector field of the formal moment map is the, the fundamental vector field. The Hamiltonian vector field of the formal is the fundamental vector field. Uh, so there is no H bar on the left side, okay? Just take away message. So the group action is not changed. There is no formal expansion of a group action or something that's involved. Um, okay, but we have um, a replacement for mass and Weinstein reduction. The mass, the, okay, probably here, there is the pauses, yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened. Um, so the BRST method. So I'm not sure, I mean, BRST, basically the, the only thing 
what you know about BRST, or at least I know about BRST, people saying BRST and everybody means something else. <laughs> so uh, I try to review what I mean with the BRST method. Okay, so you take a formal Hamiltonian G space. So again, this is group action plus formal Poisson plus formal moment map. And you take a look at the following algebra with the, with the obvious product. So the tensor wise product. So it's um, the exterior algebra of the dual of the Lie algebra and the exterior algebra of the Lie algebra itself, but with, with negative degrees and the smooth functions and then um, formal power series over that. Okay, this algebra is very interesting because um, it has a degree Poisson structure, a degree zero Poisson structure, which comes from a Poisson structure um, on the, the first factor, like uh, the exterior algebra of G, uh, G star and the exterior algebra of G, um, which you can just see as the, I mean, in a, in a graded way, there is just in a, in a weirdly graded way, there is just the, um, the cotangent bundle of G, star, G written and like graded functions on it, right? So, and this has of course uh, a symplectic structure even. This is this uh, bracket with the index G. And I have a Poisson structure on the smooth functions of M. This was uh, part of the hypothesis. And then I combine them. Okay. Um, this algebra has more features. It has what is called uh, usually the charge. The charge is the bracket of the Lie algebra. This is an element in, in this algebra because it's a map from uh, the second wedge of G star. Uh, it's an element of, it's, sorry, it's, an, it's a map from the second wedge of G to G. So it is an element of the second wedge of G star tensor G, right? Uh, so this is the first part, this is the, the bracket and the moment map itself as a map is also part of it, uh, of this algebra. Um, G star, uh, at the moment map, as we've seen, this is a map from G to uh, the smooth functions on M, formal power series we ignore for a moment. So it is an element of G, uh, G star, uh, G star tensor the smooth functions, right? Which is also part of this algebra. And now the interesting part is um, that this charge, it has degree one. So it's not clear that it self commutes because of the degree uh, of the Poisson structure. So you cannot make this funny uh, Lie algebra a trick that it, it's symmetric because here it's actually symmetric. Um, but it self commutes because of the properties of the bracket and the moment map. And you can basically with this, you can cook up um, a differential, which is just the bracket with the charge. Okay. Um, uh, Jonas. Yeah. I think someone in the chat was asking uh, something. Uh, Sorry, the chat. Yeah. yeah. So, well, what do you mean by a charge? Yeah, I can ask directly. Um, th this is, I mean, I don't actually have a good answer. I, I just cited literature, basically. This is what is usually ca called a BRST charge, this element but, inside it. Oh, okay. But it, it's just an element of the algebra which satisfies those equations. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Uh, sorry, yeah. may, may I interrupt? Yes. Uh, I think the, 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 the name charge comes out of the fact that BRST method is something that has been created by physicists. So there is a physical interpretation. To be honest, I don't know what it is, but this is the reason. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to call it charge, right? I mean, that's- Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. The, the, yeah. yeah, it has been created in a physical setting. And there, I mean, this is really a charge. Uh, and then that we kept this this name essentially, but for us this is just this algebraic structure. Exactly. I, I, so I know the charge should, charges should just generate symmetry. Exactly. Generates BRST symmetry, but exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you will you you will now see what we're doing. So if you say that the charge is a symmetry, then we take a look at the invariant ones. <laughs> 
which is uh, taking cohomology, right? So the point is, um, if you have all these assumptions and your group action is nice enough, basically the same way as it should be for the mass and Weinstein reduction, so that everything is a smooth manifold, then um, the zero of cohomology with respect to this, dif uh, this differential is um, uh, are the smooth functions on the reduced manifold. And the Poisson structure has degree zero and um, the, the differential is inner. So the, the zero of cohomology always carries a Poisson structure. And this Poisson structure, we can basically just transfer the Poisson structure to, um, to the C infinity functions of MRET. And now the theorem says that actually this Poisson structure on the reduced manifold is the mass and Weinstein reduction. Okay, so the, the point is what I wanted to say is that it doesn't matter what you're doing, if your BRST or mass and Weinstein, at least for, for Poisson structure, for formal we've seen mass and Weinstein fails. Um, what you get is a Poisson structure on the reduced manifold. So this is just reviewing what, what is already known. Can I um, ask a question? Sure. Um, so this is actually classical BRST. So I do not understand uh, if there is anything quantum in, in this picture. Um, not yet. I don't no. see why this using the... formal uh, power series rather than usual uh, object. Um, the, you will see. I, I hope I can make it more clear later. Basically, because um, the, the L infinity morphism we will construct later, we need to fix an element. And this formal power series are basically just the induced uh, the, the, the filtration on the L infinity algebra. I need that the, the, the structure or the, the, the map on, this, on the level of Maura Cartan element exists. But this we, I will discuss later, hopefully. But, yeah, but, but is this a H bar in any quantum sense, or it's just a formal parameter? Uh, it's a formal parameter. Full stop. You can take T if you like, or or new. This is this, there's no quantum sense okay. so far. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um. So what we've seen is, if we fix this is what I just said. If we fix a moment map and the Lie group action with fix a moment map, I mean an equivariant map from G to the smooth functions, then these procedures give us a map from this formal expansions of, um, of uh, uh, Poisson structures and uh, formal, formal moment map and formal Poisson structures. But we need to fix the zero of order of the, of the moment map because out of this moment map, we cooked up the reduced manifold. So if we don't fix this, there is no reduced manifold. Just a reminder, a reduced manifold was the zero level set of the moment map modulo the, the Lie group, okay? But if then we have a map from this formal Poisson structures with formal moment maps to formal Poisson structures on the, on the reduced manifold, okay? So the question I try to answer during this talk is what kind of algebraic structure does this have? Because on the left hand side, you have moment maps with Poisson structures. They do not possess any obvious linear, whatever structure. They're, they're not a vector space. You cannot add Poisson structures. Um, the same on the right hand side, but there is a, a big but in this. Um, both sets are uh, Maura Cartan elements of certain curved Lie algebras, and there is an L infinity morphism connecting this. Um, connecting this curved Lie algebras. Um, and I, we will see in a second that an L infinity morphism um, between curved Lie algebras always induces a map on the level of Maura Cartan elements. And this map we can recover with this L infinity morphism, okay? So basically what I'm saying is that mass and Weinstein reduction or the BRST method for reducing is, oh, there's a, something in the chat. Um, I yes, go. Dima is asking whether they are curved DGD algebras. What are curved? 
this the question what are curved Lie algebras no whether these curved Lie algebras are actually curved dg Lie algebras uh, I will come to this in a second. One is not, and the other one is yes. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, the, um, so what I want to say is that an L infinity morphism always induces a map on the level of Maura Cartan elements. And this map for this particular L infinity morphism we constructed is actually nothing else but the, let's say, Marston Weinstein reduction map. Okay. So I will review, as I already uh, threatened, uh, I will review uh, L infinity morphisms and curved Lie algebras, okay? So we forget everything what we know, like Poisson, we forget Poisson geometry for, for a second. Um, I take a look at the, at the, um, at the graded vector space um, together with the Lie bracket, this is why curved Lie algebra um, of degree zero. Um, I have a derivation of this vector space, uh, of the, uh, sorry, of the bracket. But now the big turn, why this is not a DGLA, is because there is a curvature which is closed and the square of the differential is not zero. Uh, I should not call it differential. The square of D is not zero. It's the bracket with the with the curvature. So, I mean, what is a good example for that? If you take um, the endomorph, oh, okay, there is something in the chat. I think uh, Dima was pointing out that this is what he meant. Uh, ah, okay, okay. That's the structure he had in mind. Ah, okay, yeah, I, I, I know that this, this is uh, the, the, the literature, but differential always in the, says something like d squared equals zero, right? Which is not, yeah, but okay, I see the point. Okay. Um, so um, this is the next sentence, basically. If the, the curvature is zero, then we say it's um, a differential graded Lie algebra or DGLA for short. Okay, this seems a very long definition and on the other hand, we have a very short definition, but with some algebraic stuff going on, which is um, the one of an L infinity algebra, <laughs> which says, I mean, I'm just reading out loud for a second and then I will explain that it's actually really not that hard. It's a degree one co-derivation on the co-unital, co-nilpotent, co-commutative, co-algebra, co-freely co-generated by degraded vector space. There were a lot of co's inside. Um, takeaway message is you take a vector space, a graded vector space, shifted by one, and take the symmetric algebra. And this is exactly this co-free object in this, in this category. And um, so all the cos which are written in the, in the line of the definition, you can just erase from your head and can think of it as the symmetric algebra of, or the graded symmetric in some sense. Um, and an L infinity structure on a graded vector space is a co-differential on the symmetric algebra, um, which squares to zero. Then in the same, basically the same reason we will see in, in, a, in a second, if um, the differential vanishes on, on one, the co-differential, sorry, the, the co-differential varies, uh, the, co-derivation vanishes on one, we say that it's flat, okay? In the literature, you usually say that there is, or you've, you see, you've seen probably the, the, they distinguish between um, L infinity algebras and curved L infinity algebras. I do the opposite because it's shorter for me. I take L infinity algebras and flat L infinity algebras. Okay, then there are some lemmas which you should just for short notice, um, um, I will use this later on, but um, basically what it says is that because of this co-freeness condition, this differential is completely determined by its what it's called Taylor coefficients. So on the nth, so the, 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 um, basically it's, it's uh, uniquely determined by this. Um, and it has a quad uh, and all this map have some quadratic uh, properties between them, which we should not care at the moment. 
And if it's flat, we should mention that the Q1 is a differential. Okay, so you have basically a cochain complex plus some plus some more structures like you have in the DGLA setting. Okay, um, um, if we have an L infinity algebra, an element of degree one is called Maura Cartan if this equation is fulfilled. Okay. Um, so let's take an example. We take a curved Lie algebra and we try to induce an L infinity structure on it. This is basically just by saying Q0 of one is minus the curvature, Q1 is minus the differential, and the Q2 is some variation of the bracket and all the higher ones vanish, okay? So this is a generalization of a curve in the algebra, basically. This is the takeaway message. But if we generalize, we have more morphisms. That's, that's uh, the, again, the, the message. Okay, talking about morphisms, um, we, uh, an L infinity morphism is um, a morphism between the, the symmetric algebras generated by the graded vector spaces, which intertwines the differentials. So it's not actually just a map between the two graded vector spaces. It has higher maps, basically. Okay, this is the next. This map is completely determined by this Taylor coefficients. And as we just see, that a Maura Cartan element. Uh, a Maura Cartan element fulfilling this funny equation we had some uh, in the previous slide gets mapped via this L infinity morphism to a Maura Cartan element. There, I should have made in the lemma some brackets which say if it exists. Of course, there is an infinite sum written if the if the morphism has infinitely many uh, coefficients, so it might not exist. But if it exists, it's a Maura Cartan element. Okay. Um, very important for us is twisting of Maura Cartan, uh, twisting of L infinity morphisms. So if we take uh, an L infinity morphism and an element in in the in the first as uh, so of degree one in the in the left um, L infinity algebra, we define this pi tilde via this formula. Then we have some some uh, competition, uh, uh, conditions. So if this map, which is just the insertion of the Taylor coefficients of Q, uh, the same for the, 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 the uh, L infinity algebra K, and the same for the morphism, who we just insert and expand basically. If they exist, then you can basically twist one differential, twist the other differential, and twist the morphism, and it stays an L infinity morphism. Okay? So again, takeaway messages um, from this tiny part about L infinity algebras. Um, L infinity algebras are generalization of curved Lie algebras, and Maura Cartan elements Get, get mapped to Maura Cartan elements via L infinity morphisms. Actually, our uh, examples of L infinity algebras will be just curved Lie algebras, but the morphisms not. Okay, so you can basically forget everything about L infinity algebras, um, besides the next slide, of course. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, the, sorry, I forgot. Um, for curved Lie algebras, we can twist also the, the structures and what we get is a new curvature and new differential. The bracket stays the same. So um, this is just later use. I will remind you uh, when it's time. Okay, uh, for a second, we, we need um, the quasi-isomorphism because at a certain point we will invert something. Um, an L infinity morphism between two flat L infinity algebras. We've seen flat means uh, that Q1 is a differential. So the, the first component of the L infinity structure is a differential. Um, we call an L infinity uh, morphism quasi isomorphism if the first component is a quasi isomorphism uh, of the differential. So this means that F1 is an isomorphism in cohomology of this of this differential. 
Okay. And this is very important for us. Um, if you take, if you have an L infinity quasi isomorphism between two flat L infinity algebras, then there exists an inverse, a quasi inverse. So it's an L infinity morphism going in the other direction, such that the first component of it is a quasi inverse of the first component of the, the, the one we started with. This is not unique at all, but it exists. Okay. So this was just the, the, the quick crash course in L infinity algebras. Um, again, takeaway message is curved Lie algebras are interesting. Morphisms are not enough. Let's take L infinity morphisms and see what comes out. Okay, so let's come back to, to our geometric setting we started with. Um, we take a manifold in the Lie group action and we take a look at what is called equivariant multivector fields. So it's a funny complex consisting of the symmetric algebra of G star tensor the polyvector fields on M. Polyvector fields are sections of the exterior algebra of TM shifted by, by some funny degrees. These are just, uh, um, yeah, polyvector fields. And they possess two structures, a bracket, which is basically, I mean, you don't do anything. You bracket the vector fields and multiplying the, the uh, symmetric G star parts and a curvature, which is just the action. So it's an element from G star tensor a vector field. So what we're doing is, I mean, it's written there. It's written down in the basis because I think it's, you see better what is happening, but it's actually basis independent what is, what is written here. So EI is the is a dual basis of a basis of the Lie algebra. And so this is the fundamental vector field, what we've seen. And uh, so the, the EI uh, bottom M is a, is a fundamental vector field. And the first one is the element of the dual of the Lie algebra. OK, so what is the interesting parts about this? We can take a look at the maurer cartan elements of this curved Lie algebras as we define it for L infinity algebras. But for us, takeaway message is um, we have this equation on the level of curved Lie algebras. And what comes out is that, um, that uh, a maurer cartan element splits always in two. This is because, of, because uh, our uh, L infinity algebra is actually bigraded. Um, which is uh, a one factor is a Poisson structure and the other one is a moment map. So, okay, so we, we found something which has the right Maura Cartan elements. Okay. Um, the question is now, uh, what do we actually want? Okay. This is, uh, I, I'm referring to what Luca said. Um, okay. If we choose an equivariant moment map, remember this was exactly the setting of where the map started. If we fix a moment map, then we have this funny map between formal Poisson and uh, formal Poisson on the reduced manifold. Then we consider this curved Lie algebras. Now I, I inserted some H bar somewhere, which you can forget <laughs> if you like uh, for the next slides. Um, the point is here, the maurer cartan elements are of this form. Again, they split because of the splitting. Uh, a formal Poisson structure plus a formal moment map starting with the J, okay? This was exactly what we are searching for. Okay, so the main aim is to find an L infinity morphism between um, this Lie algebra which without the H bars going to the polyvector fields on M red and then inducing the H bars artificially again in order to obtain this morphism, which is written in the, in the bottom line. Okay, so, and this will map, okay, I, I should say one more, um, one more statement before I switch the slide. So the Maura, then we've seen this is an L infinity morphism. So it maps Maura Cartan to Maura Cartan. Maura Cartan in this, uh, left DTLAs are, as we've seen, a formal Poisson structure plus formal moment maps. And on the right-hand side, what are Maura-Cartan elements in this, in this uh, DTLA? This is just, I mean, 
Poisson structures, right? Okay, so let's make the baby version of this. We assume that M is C cross G star um, with a diagonal action. So we have an action on C and we take the co-adjoint action on G star. We have the moment map, which is just a projection on G star part. And we have the KKS Poisson structure, which I'm KKS Poisson structure, I mean, not the one from the dual of the Lie algebra, but the one, um, if we see G times C as a, a Lie algebra, then the dual, uh, yeah. There is a good. What is uh, C? Oh, sorry, I, I forgot. This is just a manifold. It's just a manifold. C is just a manifold. So. Thanks. Okay, um, and we have the KKS Poisson structure, which is the KKS Poisson structure of the Lie algebra um, G times C over C. Okay, the dual of the dual of a Lie algebra always has, has a linear Poisson structure, and this is what I mean with the KKS one. Okay, this is a Hamiltonian G space, as you can check, and the zero set of the moment map is obviously C. Um, we can take this element, as we've seen, Poisson structures minus moment maps are Maura Cartan elements. So we can twist this whole uh, equivariant multi vector fields by this element. And uh, what we get is a DGLA now because the curvature gets killed, basically, because we are taking a look at Maura Cartan elements. Okay. And so the intermediate aim for now is. To take a look, a closer look at this uh, DGLA, um, find a DGLA1 which a D with a DGLA morphism, a DGLA2 with a quasi isomorphism to I, and a quasi isomorphism to uh, the polyvector fields on the reduced manifold. And then we have an L infinity morphism from the very left to the very right because uh, quasi isomorphisms are invertible. This is the whole the whole idea now. Okay, so now uh, since we're doing math and there was an H bar, which means that I'm part wise physicist, some ugly formulas. Um, so basically, I'm just take away what is written here. Um, it's called the vertical Taylor expansion. So a function on C cross G star depends on two variables: on the variables in C and on G star, and in the direction of G star, we can perform a Taylor expansion. Okay, this is what is written here in a more formal way. Okay, this map is G equivariant. I mean, with the with the joint action on the on the symmetric algebra of G, and then extended to uh, to the direct product of the symmetric tensors in G, and. Um, this map extends to a morphism from the, the curved Lie algebra we've seen so far, uh, the, Lie, the Lie algebra, um, the, the multi-vector fields, the equivariant multi-vector fields, to one I just um, define, which is basically the above map, just I, I just tailor expand uh, vector fields. Now, this is the second tensor factor with the, the product in front. Um, I just tailor expand vector fields uh, in G star direction. This is, um, if you don't understand uh, at the moment, you can ask me now or later, of course. And there is a tiny lemma that this map um, is a DGLA morphism with I take the pi I defined before, which was the KKS Poisson structure minus the, the canonical moment map, and I tailor expand these two structures. <laughs> so it's a uh, uh, DGLA morphism. And what will be important later is it's a more it's a morphism of curved Lie algebra, same game uh, with uh, the curvature and the differential twisted by by minus j. And here you see the say I just uh, tailor expand the the two structures, uh, which are also on the left hand side. Okay, so um, if you remember our intermediate aim, it was um, that we want to find one. Well, let's call this one. 
we have the Taylor expansion around C, and I'm basically already going to um, um, uh, an interesting DG subalgebra, which is which we call the Cartan model um, of a Lie group action. I will I will say something later. This is why this card is written there. Okay, this has a, a differential. You have to believe me that it's a DG uh, a sub differential graded Lie algebra. Um, and the differential looks very easy. It's just inserting in the first factor and wedging with the fundamental vector field, okay? And it's obvious that it's a differential because the first factor is symmetric and the second factor is anti-symmetric, okay? Um, now, the interesting part, as so you believe me that this I, the inclusion, is a DG uh, in, uh, is a um, inclusion of a, a, a sub DGLA. So, um, so what I have to check is now that this I is a uh, this I is a quasi isomorphism. Okay, what I what I check for that is I basically write down a, com a homotopy between the two differentials and I and P. You have to believe me that this is true. Um, the the proof actually works. Uh, Kind of simple, you take the differential uh, just by bracketing with J and you have, you can write down a homotopy and then you take the, uh, uh, the homological perturbation lemma in order to get one of the perturbed differential with the KKS structure. You have to believe. It. Okay, um, just a tiny definition. We call this Cartan model. There are some reasons why we call this basically because it's dual to the Cartan model for, um, for forms. And for the forms, we know that the Cartan model of a Lie group action, the cohomology for that is um, the cohomology on the base. So let's make a try. Assume that, that, that this um, that, uh, C is a principal bundle. Then we know that the quotient is a manifold. But we know more. We know that we have a map from the multi-vector fields from the Cartan model above to the, the multi-vector fields on the quotient, which is basically working like this. I project an element to the, uh, to the factor with zero degree in G, star, in G, sorry, in the symmetric algebra G. And then I, what I get is the first arrow, I get just an invariant multi-vector field and invariant multi-vector fields are projectable. And then I project it, okay? And now we want to show that this is a quasi isomorphism. Okay. And in fact, you can construct, you're even again in a nice case, you can construct uh, a family of deformation retracts. So, what do we do? We choose a principal connection and we define the following um, operator, which basically does exactly the opposite it wedges. I do, it, it, it takes a symmetric product with an element from G and inserts the, the, the one form part of the principal connection. Okay, then we have the tiny lemma, which says that if I take the commutator with the, the del, I get a, a, de a, a degree in G and a vertical degree. If I have chosen a um, um, a principal connection. I can talk about vertical degrees. This is exactly what is written here. And I can rescale it by this. And this basically says that the horizontal lift um, is an inverse of P. And I can induce via this uh, tilde H um, an homotopy between them. So in particular, P is a quasi isomorphism. Okay. Uh, for this, just for uh, a minute, notable mentions. There's a canonical choice. I, I just think it's beautiful. It doesn't have to do anything with the, with the actual talk, or I don't need it anymore. Um, there is a canonical choice of a quasi-inverse now as an L infinity morphism. So if you don't like L infinity algebras, you just uh, can get a coffee at the moment. Um, you take for an element, an invariant element of the two forms of C, tensor G, you can define um, an operator of 
twice the Cartan model to the Cartan model. And what you, I mean, this is basically by inserting the two form part and then hiring the, the, the G part, the, the symmetric algebra in G part. And you can see this as a co-derivation of degree zero of the, of the symmetric algebras of the Cartan model now, okay? And what is very beautiful to me is that if you take omega to be the curvature of it, of the connection, then the horizontal lift uh, followed by e to the omega is a quasi inverse, where you can see very nicely that, I mean, you, of course, everybody knows that the horizontal lift is not a Lie algebra morphism uh, if the curvature is not vanishing. But here you even see how to correct the, the, to be an L infinity morphism at least. Okay, um, as I said, this is not really important for the talk, just uh, I wanted to show. So a tiny summary, an intermediate summary. So we've seen that we have this Taylor expansion. We go, go to this Taylor expanded vector fields. We have the Cartan model and we have the reduced manifolds. And we have seen that the, the arrow pointing upwards from the middle and the arrow pointing downwards uh, are quasi isomorphisms. So we know already that this dashed arrow exists as an L infinity morphism. And now we think back. This is not what we want, actually. We just made this as a baby model. Like we, we twisted a bit around uh, and what we got is um, a, a DGLA, which we actually were not interested in the first place. We remember we wanted to have this reduced, uh, this uh, reducing L infinity morphism, um, which takes into account not the KKS structure, but just the moment map, okay? So the next aim, it's basically saying that I, um, I want to ex express the L infinity quasi inverse of this inclusion of the Cartan model into the Taylor expanded poly vector fields. Um, I know now this is a quasi isomorphism. I invert it and then I use twisting, okay? So there is a, a, funny, a funny way to see this. Um, if you have a deformation retract of complexes, I mean, these are both DGLA, sorry, I forgot to write it down, plus the map I is a DGLA map, then just for experts, this implication arrow doesn't, uh, doesn't mean anything. Uh, it says that transferred L infinity structure on A is given by the original L infinity structure. Okay, transferred is referring to the homotopy transfer theorem. We, if you if you never heard of, just ignore it. Um, but there is a lemma. There is a rather explicit recursive formula for the Taylor coefficients of the quasi inverse. Okay. Um, I will not write it down because it's explicit but ugly. <laughs> this is, you have to uh, you have to imagine. Okay, and this is not really surprising. I just say tensor trick for A infinity, there is something like it's called a tensor trick, um, which uh, gives me the formula for, um, for uh, an inverse in this situation, uh, for, for an L infinity morphism in this situation. But takeaway message from this slide is there is a recurse in, in, in case of a, a deformation retract. And one arrow is um, a DGLA map. There is a very recurse, a very explicit formula, but ugly, of uh, a quasi inverse. Okay. And now we use this quasi inverse to twist back, basically. Okay. Now, again, if, if you're lost a bit, we will summarize this in a, in a second. Um, this now, we twist this morphism, as I explained in the L, L infinity crash course. Uh, that we can twist morphisms. So we take the KKS structure. The KKS structure itself is an element in L1, right? So we can twist it back and we get an L infinity morphism between this Taylor with the, let's say the right differential and, um, oh, sorry, I forgot the curvature. Sorry, um, there in the first, there should be written a curvature, but, um, I will correct it before uploading the slides. And 
Ah, yeah, and the Cartan model. This was the inverse of the, the projection to the Cartan model. Um, with, of course, the, the, the twisted structures now. Again, this is not what we want because we don't want these twisted structures. So now we actually have to work. And you can show that these twisted structures vanish. <laughs> so there is no twisted structure left over. This morph, uh, the, the, the morphism doesn't see the KKS structure in some sense. And what you get is an L infinity morphism from the Taylor expansion to the Cartan model. So exactly the right, with the right structures already. Okay, this is again, um, takeaway message. We get the right morphism. <laughs> this is actually, it should be the name of my talk. Um, okay, the final step is we made some assumptions. We made some, for example, we, we said that M is C times G star and all the stuff. So I want to make as a final, final step, I think I'm basically in time. Uh, I want to make as a final, final step, um, the precise statement and what we have. And then, um, so if we have a Lie group action and an equivariant map with regular value zero, so the pre-image is, is a sub manifold. And if the Lie group acts properly in the neighborhood of the sub manifold, um, then there exists an open neighborhood of C times G star containing the zero section such that uh, U is diffeomorphic to an open subset in M containing C. Okay, it's basically like a tubular neighborhood, but a bit better. And J is given by the projection to G star. And what I forgot is the Lie group action splits into a Lie group action on C and the core joint action on G star. Okay, this was actually the case we treated like when M was uh, C times G star. Okay, and the, the final statement and the, the final theorem, which is now basically applicable, which is just putting together all the structures we've seen before, is um, we have a Lie group action and an equivariant moment map. If G acts properly around the manifold, we want to be in the situation of the above theorem. And if it's free on C, Remember that we assumed in order to get this morphism that we have that C is a principal bundle, so it needs to be free and proper. Proper it is already on C because it is around C proper, and free we need to add. And what we get is the desired L infinity morphism. And which I didn't explain is you can show that this morphism really induces the mass on Weinstein or BRST reduction on the level of Maurer Cartan elements. Okay, so um, in the last minutes or two minutes, um, you may raise the question why, why and what do we do now? Okay, um, there is another complex or another DGLA or curvely algebra looking similar, which is SG star tensor the, the poly differential operators on the manifold vanishing on uh, constants. This is a D poly. This is the, the one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now we can do the same trick. We take a moment map, we shift a bit the, the, the curvature with an H bar. And what we get is that Maura Cartan elements of this uh, curved Lie algebras are equivariant star products. With equivariant star products, we can reduce. There is also a BRST method to reduce them. You need to work a bit more than for Poisson structures. But um, we want to see the same. We want to see the, basically the same what we did for the for the multivector fields. We want to see for the for the star products. So um, there are some experts in this field around, I think. So I I stopping with the conjecture, basically. I always wanted to do that, so this is why I'm doing it now. I say that this works the same for uh, the polyvector fields. Okay, sorry, on the right-hand side, there should be formal power series in H bar. Um, and this morphism induces um, the BRST reduction of star products on the level of Maura-Cartan elements. Star products on 
on the, the reduced manifolds are just Maurer-Cartan elements in this uh, right-hand side complex. And if we, as we've seen, equivariant star product, uh, what I claimed, we didn't see, uh, equivariant star products are Maurer-Cartan in the left-hand side. And if you're a bit familiar with Konsevich, Konsevich showed that Maurer-Cartan elements of the polyvector fields are the same as star products, uh, are, is the same as Maurer-Cartan element of this dipoly, so star products. So now we have like an infinity morphisms going in every direction you can imagine, and we try to compare them. This is now what we want to do with all of this. So uh, thank you for listening to me. <laughs>